Hey everybody, welcome to Funny Bug Bees and Woodworks. Uh, this is part three in the Winterizing Your Hive series and what we're going to talk about today is the two methods to currently treat Varroa mites uh, with oxalic acid. Um, I'm going to go over the two methods I use, when I use them, when I don't use them, and the equipment that I use. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because there's primarily three things that kill your bees in the winter and that's starvation, which we covered in our last video, uh, last two videos. Uh, varroa mites going into winter with a high varroa mite count and uh, and the third one is uh, is freeze outs or humidity in the hive which is what usually causes free outs, so, uh, freeze outs so we'll cover in the next video we're going to cover um, uh, good ways to combat condensation inside your hives but for this video let's go ahead and get started uh, there's two primary methods that you can use one is vaporization and the other is fogging there are reasons that you would use one over the other uh, at different times of the year, at least in my experience, but before we do that, we need to cover safety equipment that you're going to need for both types uh, of application. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need is a pair of safety glasses uh, for splashes. You're going to need a good respirator uh, from a big box store, and in particular, these cartridges, which are um, rated for organic compounds and acids so you'll need to make sure that the cartridges you get for your respirator uh, come with those now this particular respirator i got from a big box store came with the cartridges that already handle organic acid organic compounds and acids so i didn't need to purchase anything else i just replace these every six months or so just to be safe so you'll need that and you'll also need uh, some gloves safety gloves uh, nitrile latex whatever you like to use we're not dealing with acids here that are so strong that they're going to boil your skin away right away. So uh, these are perfectly fine uh, to use and it's what I use. Um, and uh, I keep these around for doing lots of things. It's actually what I wear when I work my bees is nitrile gloves. I don't like the big heavy beekeeper gloves. So that's the safety equipment that you're going to use. Now, um, let's have a quick discussion about why you would use fogging versus uh, vaporization. Uh, there's a lot of talk right now that fogging is not as effective as vaporization and I would agree with that with the one caveat that one application of a fogging method is not and is never going to be as good as one application of a vaporized application. Um, however, I do not use fogging in one application. Now, let me explain that. The Varolite has a 14 to 17 day life cycle. Uh, which means that in order to knock them down, including the ones in the, in the brood cells, because neither one of these treatments will kill mites that are incubating inside of a brood cell. So they emerge a few days after you treat or a week after you treat or whatever, and then you're, you've got mites back again. So uh, to break the life cycle, when the queen is producing brood, uh, which is during the spring and summer months and up into the fall, uh, I use fogging. And the reason for that is because for me uh, to treat um, when there is when there is no uh, brood or brood present is in the winter time. So uh, the fogging method for me works better in the summer um, because I use three applications of this. I do it uh, three applications spread out over uh, 12 to 14 days, so three to four days or so, um, uh, or four to five days uh, depending. Uh, is how often I'll do this. So I'll treat each hive uh, three times over 12 to 15 days. Um, now the reason I do that is because the first application knocks down the mites that are in the hive currently, uh, but more are emerging on a daily basis. Um, so I'll treat four to five days later. The second treatment, those knock out the ones uh, that have emerged but have not yet made it. And then the third application kills that last uh, generation of, of mites that may be coming out of those cells and therefore you break the life cycle. I've found in my own personal experience, and I'm, I'm not negating anybody else's advice, but in my personal experience this method works just as good uh, when you have brood, doing it three times with the fogger uh, as it does doing it when you don't have brood one time with the vaporizer. So with the vaporizer I don't like to do it while I have brood because to treat three times with the vaporizer in such a short period of time to get that to get full kill of all the mites to me just seems like too much oxalic acid in the hive in too tight of a time frame. 
so I like using fogging um, instead during the spring and summer months and into the fall. In the winter time for my final mite treatment of the year um, is when I will switch to vaporization. I wait for the queen to go broodless and I treat one time uh, with the vaporizer. Since there are no mites in any cells, um, it kills pretty much all of them and you don't and you go into winter with a really strong hive with no mites um, your bees are not going to become anemic they're not going to have you know mites feeding on them all winter uh, and it's just a really good way to do it so let's go over some of the equipment you're going to use it's a lot less equipment for vaporizing than it is for fogging um, but we'll start out with the fogging we've already covered the safety equipment uh, what you're going to need is an insect fogger that runs on propane um, this one I got at my local big box store um, and you'll notice it comes with a really big uh, yellow plastic uh, uh, receptacle for liquids that you might want to fog through it like you know bug spray uh, this plastic I don't believe is acid safe um, so I take it off and I throw it away I, I've never used it I didn't throw it away I still have it in case you know I may want it one day but I, but I have it and instead, what you put on this is a glass jar. This glass jar, it's a standard mason style jar. You'll find it at any store. You can get them. They're used for canning. This is the, uh, I'd say it's probably a 200 millimeter or milliliter uh, jar uh, made for making jelly. The thread size and pattern on this glass jar is exactly the same as that plastic yellow bin. So it screws right on to these particular foggers as you can see there. The glass is acid safe um, and so it takes the worry out of that. So you will need this and you'll need a can of propane. Uh, you know you can pick it up at your big box store or a camping store or anywhere that sells camping supplies is going to have these canisters of propane. The next thing you're going to need is a scale, kitchen scale, uh, that can weigh milliliters and grams. Um, this particular one I got uh, online um, and it does everything I need. Uh, I have a separate one for my kitchen. I bought this one just to use for this purpose, uh, but it does measure ounces, milliliters, grams. Uh, I think it even goes up to uh, 12 pounds or so, but anyway, we never use that much. So you'll need a scale to measure out the dosage correctly for your oxalic acid and for the next product which is grain alcohol. Now there are two ways to do this. Um, you can either use 90 proof grain alcohol, um, which you can get fairly inexpensively at your local liquor store, uh, which is where I picked this up at, or you can use uh, uh, distilled water. Um, oxalic acid will dissolve in distilled water. Uh, it just will not do so at room temperature. Um, and it takes longer to evaporate in the hive. So some people don't like to use distilled water and they use alcohol instead because it evaporates really quickly, turns into a gaseous state, exits the hive, and you don't have to worry about it. I definitely recommend using alcohol in the wintertime instead of water because we don't want water in our hives in the wintertime. The next thing you're going to need is a Pyrex dish or any other brand you like. Uh, this particular one I got at the same place I purchased this but we'll go into that in a second and this is for measuring out uh, your liquid uh, it's got a milliliter uh, gauge on the side um, and so you'll need that and then you'll need a hot plate I bought this one online I think I paid about 12 bucks for it it works amazingly well for what I need it to do which is heat up this canister with water distilled water or alcohol in it as I add my oxalic acid crystals until it dissolves and then you take it off the heat, let it you know, pour it into the other jar. So, and then of course you need oxalic acid. So there's quite a bit of equipment that you need and a spoon, of course a metal spoon to stir while it's warming up. There's quite a bit of equipment that you're going to need to fog. If I had to give you a total dollar value of everything that's here that I required for this, uh, 15, 85, 95 a hundred dollars uh, just for oh sorry sorry hundred and twenty dollars with the scale so 120 bucks 
That's what that'll cost you, not including the oxalic acid and not including your safety equipment. The next option that we have is an oxalic acid vaporizer that runs on uh, a 12 volt battery. In other words, a lawnmower battery or something like that. Um, I use this in the winter time, specifically uh, when my hives are broodless. It takes uh, two, two minutes and 10 seconds per application with the battery pack that I have. Um, and and, uh, and so it, it takes considerably longer than the fogging method. With fogging, I can fog a hive in six seconds and move to the next hive. You simply insert the front of the fogger into the entrance, give it three or four good puffs, and move to the next hive. That, that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, with this, though, you have to insert it in the hive. You have to look, well, first you have to load it with your oxalic acid, insert it into the hive, connect your battery clips to your battery source, and that can be a lawnmower battery or whatever you like. Uh, wait two minutes and 10 seconds, that's what I, I do it for because I've tested it and that's how long it takes for this particular battery pack to completely sublimate, vaporize all of the oxalic acid. Uh, and then, then you can move to the next hive. A after you, after you uh, vaporize it, you close up the hive, leave, leave it for 10 minutes with, the, with a rag in the front entrance and, and then come back and remove it after 10 minutes. I don't use a lawnmower battery because I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, why use a battery and have to deal with a separate battery charger to charge the lawnmower battery? So what I did is I went and got a jump start pack. Okay, this one I got at a big box store. Um, it's a 750 amp uh, battery pack that you use to recharge your car. This one also actually has an air compressor built in and it plugs into the wall socket in the house so when I'm done I just come in and plug it in and we're good and it also doubles as a way to jump a car if I need to even though I have a truck and jumper cables. So this method works really well for me. You simply take your positive and negative terminal, plug them or clip them to your positive and negative terminal on your, on your vaporizer and then wait the two minutes. Uh, so let's again quickly cover this. You do not want to go into winter with a hive full of mites. You will have lots of winter losses. The bees become anemic. They, they're being fed on by a parasite and having to go long periods of time uh, without treatment. So um, after the last honey flow is done, after they've bedded down for winter and you've made sure that the queen has pretty much stopped producing brood and is no longer doing that, then that's when I do my treatments with my vaporizer. This particular treatment method requires two grams, uh, two to three grams of oxalic acid per hive per treatment. Uh, this method, uh, what I do is I use 100 milliliters of grain alcohol, 90 proof, 75 proof, whatever if you can't get it, but it depends on your state, um, and 30 uh, grams of oxalic acid. 30 grams of oxalic acid mixed with 100 mils of grain alcohol to produce an acidic solution of oxalic acid. Um, that gets sprayed into the hive, about three or four puffs uh, is all you need, and I can do a lot of hives with this. So uh, it's much, I think it's much less dosage per treatment than the vaporizer method, okay? But you're going to treat three times with this over 15 days, 12 to 15 days. So you end up getting about the same meltdown. Oxalic acid was approved for vaporization into hives by the EPA, uh, so we can do it now without having to worry about breaking the law or using off-label uh, type uh, chemicals to do this. Oxalic acid is naturally found in honey. It's a naturally occurring compound. Rhubarb has, has oxalic acid in it, um, things that we eat. Uh, and so far, the, the research that's, is, that's been done does not show that there is contamination of stored honey with oxalic acid on treatment through the cappings. Uh, that said, I do not, I'm not going to tell you to treat your hives with honey supers on. I'm going to tell you to treat them without honey supers on. That's what you should do. Um, just for safety concerns and just to make sure there's no reason. There's also been several articles that have come out recently in peer-reviewed journals uh, about whether or not varroa mites become resistant to oxalic acid. 
Uh, one recent that was done, I think was done in, in, uh, in South America. I can get a link to that below so you can read it, but they, I believe, raised 68 generations of mites um, or something like that. It was a long time, but anyway, they, they, they had, they had uh, uh, eight years or so of, of, uh, of oxalic acid treatment into hives as the sole method of, uh, of treating varroa mites, and those mites that were tested had zero resistance. So since we currently don't know what actually the the method by which oxalic acid works on varroa mites is we can't say that it's going to give them or that they will be able to develop a resistance. So far the research shows that they do not develop resistance. That said, I don't think that this should be your only varroa mite treatment. You, you should cycle treatments just to make sure there are no resistances being developed. So use two or three different treatment modalities during the year, whether it's strips or uh, of several popular products, which I won't mention here, oxalic acid, uh, among other things, and, uh, and treat for varroa mite. It's one of the biggest killers of hives in the wintertime. If you let your hives go into winter with high mite loads, you're going to be upset. Um, and before I get a bunch of hate mail and comments here on the green beekeepers uh, who say you shouldn't use any chemicals, um, personally, you know, I'm okay with using naturally occurring organic acids and compounds that occur naturally in nature. Um, I'm not a big proponent of, of harsh chemicals and things that are uh, designed in a lab. Um, that said, uh, don't send me hate mail. I don't, I don't want to get it. I don't need it. And uh, you, you do what you do and I'll support you in doing what you do and, and, and I'll do what I do. <clears throat> so anyway, so we've covered varroa mite treatments in the winter. Um, vaporization once your hive is broodless um, and the queen has shut down laying which is typically for me in, in uh, you know, late November, maybe, no, it, it's pretty warm here until late in the, sea, in, in the year. It's, it's January right now. We had six inches of snow a week ago and, uh, and it was 68 degrees uh, yesterday or whatever. So it, it's crazy here. So your times when you need to do this will vary. I fog in the spring uh, and again, once in the late summer and then I vaporize in the winter when I get ready to, to close up my hives for the winter time. That's what I do. Uh, it's worked well for me. I'm not saying that you don't have a better method, but this, this works for me. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please check out funnybugbees.com. There's plenty of useful, art, useful articles there for you. Um, one which we just published is, is some recipes to make your own bait for uh, hive beetles. So check that out. Uh, if you want to use the CD uh, type cases, um, there's plenty of recipes there. We've got recipes for bee food and how to make candy boards and all kinds of other stuff. So please check us out. Thanks for watching. We've got another video in this series coming up on winterizing your hives that will cover the moisture issue and, and what we do uh, in our bee yard uh, yards to, to take care of that. So thank you for stopping by. If you found the video useful, please like and subscribe. Click the notification bell so you get notified when we post new videos and subscribe to us. We really appreciate it. Have a good night. We'll see you later.